the latest installment of our series, meeting the newest members of Congress after 36 years in the House. Michigan Congressman Dale Kildee was replaced in January by a familiar name and face. His nephew Dan will now represent Michigan's 5th District. Dan Kildee grew up in Flint, Michigan, won his first election at 18 and served as a county treasurer and later served as president of an advocacy group for land use and urban areas. Flint is a community that's been battered by the economic downturn and the loss of manufacturing jobs over the last decade, and the numbers are still grim. Flint has a 9.1% unemployment rate. 38% of people in Flint live below the poverty line, and the median household income is just over $26,000 a year. In the last decade, more than half of the manufacturing jobs in Flint have disappeared. Michigan Congressman Dan Kelly joins me now. Congressman, welcome to Washington. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, and thanks for being on here. So, why this, this rise in manufacturing, the president's been campaigning, campaigned on it, he's talked about it. The numbers add up. There is an increase in manufacturing around the country. But the state that's home to man, where, where it all started, and particularly Flint, Michigan, the heart, why isn't it coming back there? Well, it's t I mean, one of the things we have to do is rebuild the infrastructure that supports manufacturing. Michigan and places like Flint and Saginaw Bay City are part of the old industrial strength that we had. We have not reinvested in those places. And manufacturing in the 21st century requires a different set of capacities. We haven't invested in the skills of our workers the way we should, and we haven't rebuilt the infrastructure the way we ought to. So while the president talks about manufacturing, we also have to deal with those fundamentals in order to put places like Flint, Saginaw Bay City back on that trajectory. So what is how can you turn the corner in Flint in the next five years? You know, we can see that, or, or we are a whole generation. Is it going to take that long for a Flint to, to sort of come back? Well, it won't take that long to make progress, but it will take a while to get us back in a position where we can lead again. Uh, it's lost half of its population. The landscape has been decimated. We have abandoned homes, abandoned factories. It's not attractive to new investment. So part of the fundamentals is to clean up the blight and abandonment that has been left behind as we've gone from the old economy. It, it may sound economy. because that's what Detroit has been been doing and getting a lot of coverage, but it sounds like you were trying to do the same thing in Flint, this idea of essentially shrinking the geographic size of the city. Is that To make it functional, uh, with half the population we had, uh, we needed to, I think, sort of reset the city so that we can have sustainable neighborhoods where people feel like they live in an intentional place instead of in a place that's a reminder of what it used to be, a reminder that it's no longer the city that it once was. So one of the things to do, and this is one of the things I'm pushing for, is to get more support from the state and federal government, in this case the federal government, to remove that blight in abandonment so that we can have a fresh start and attract business, attract new investment, rebuild infrastructure around a population that's more realistic for this period. So the is it simply bulldozing and creating greens? Is it, what are the different ways that you get rid of this, get rid of this blight? Well, certainly cleaning up Reducing the oversupply of abandoned housing and cleaning up empty factory sites is a big one. That's the reason. Right. When you go through Flint, you see this giant these giant, uh, essentially abandoned factories. Right. And what do you, so and 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 there's always been this hope. Well, keep the infrastructure because maybe somebody will move in. Right. Well, and I think the infrastructure is a, a big advantage that we have. Obviously, we have this tremendous investment in public infrastructure that needs some help. Needs. Uh, to be reinvent, reinvested and rebuilt. But uh, the real point, I guess, is to not be stuck in the past. Think about what we have as an asset. The way to begin to use the land that we have and the infrastructure we have as an asset is to clear out the abandonment uh, and, and start fresh. Start with a population that more closely matches the housing that we have. Make, get rid of substandard housing, in, improve the quality while simultaneously decreasing the quantity, which is the oversupply of housing industrial buildings, retail space, things of that nature. I, I want to move to guns. When I think of Michigan Democrats, that it's always, it's always been a push-pull on the issue of guns, partially because the dean of the delegation, John Dingell, has always been such an uh, outspoken pro-gun member, member of Congress. Where are you in the various gun proposals? Do you support all sort of four of them, the assault weapons ban, the background check, the clip, the, or are there ones that you want to see? Uh, well, Redone. What I would like to see is a, a comprehensive approach. Uh, we, we ought to do the things that we can agree on. Uh, 
uh, high capacity assault magazines there's no question that we ought to do something about that. Universal background checks, I think the majority of the Congress, I hope, certainly the majority of the American people are on board. Uh, and then dealing with the other uh, uh, close, closing gun sale loopholes, enforcing the laws that we have on the books and supporting local communities trying to do that. Look, the gun violence in Flint, Michigan, in Saginaw, it's handguns and it's youth that don't have a pathway to any kind of positive outcome for themselves. So what I hope we do is not decide that one of these elements that, can't, that we can't agree on is an excuse to not do anything. Uh, none of them by themselves, whether it's the assault weapon ban or magazine clips or you know, uh, working on mental health, none of them by themselves are going to solve this problem, but all of them can contribute to it. Dan Kildee? Flint, Michigan, you gave me a fun little trivia question that I'm not going to share with viewers because we're going to ask it next week. But anyway, thanks for coming on. And thanks, good luck. Welcome to Washington. Appreciate it. All right. Up next.